Now our Sean Lay is also digging into the shooter for us this afternoon and uncovering some other information. That's right, Sean, uh, you've, you're talking to people who live nearby. What have you learned so far? And we, we're trying to learn as much as we can because, Kimberly, Karen, we're parents, we're people. We want to know why. That's what everyone wants to know. Karen, you pointed out that McCray moved in with his father right here about a year ago in this small little red house at the end of a very quiet dirt road. But the Lansing State, Michigan State Capitol is just two miles behind that house. And again, you mentioned that the father had mentioned that after his mom died, he became more isolated and angry. We talked to neighbors here up and down the street. They said they would see McCray all the time this past year, but he would never speak to them and he never drove. He was always on foot and it's believed he walked five miles that way. Last night, that's exactly where campus is. It's insane. I mean, I can't, I couldn't imagine that it was happening so close to home. Megan Bender started listening to her scanner when this first call went out that five miles from her home was an active shooter on the campus of Michigan State University. MSU units, I got a shot by your complaint at Berkey Hall, 509 East Circle. Bender can lay out a perfect timeline of events for us as she listened to radio dispatch calls telling the police the shooter left victims in Berkey Hall and was moving into the student union. Shooter is in the Union Building, currently in the Union Building. Any LPD units on this channel? Shooter's in the Union Building. And then Bender was again shocked when she heard her street on the police radio. Like they say 128 East Howe Avenue. And I'm like to my husband, like, where is it? Like, it's right here. Like, we're East Howe Avenue. And he thought it was back there, but then he was like, that's Mike's house. Bender can see the house at the bottom of her hill. Mike is Mike McRae, the father of shooter Anthony McRae, who is living here with his dad. McRae walking the five miles from this home to campus, going on a rampage, and was walking back when police found his body just blocks away from this home, dead of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. He was literally on his way home, like coming from MSU to be right there on High Street. Like he was coming home, like he was about to be back over here. That's wild. I mean, it's mind blowing. And just to it's the, mind blowing. Yeah, I'm just, I was like, I'm just grateful that he didn't decide to go crazy around home. Back here live. So much to wrap your head around here. The police flooding that area. We know they did such a good job running towards the danger, but McCray walking out of a door and almost reaching the five miles back here to the home before his body was discovered. Also, if you're not supposed to have a gun legally and you're firing a gun out of the back of this home, that's what many neighbors are telling us. And they're telling us police were here that day. How are you not under arrest and the gun taken away? We've asked Lansing police that. They're busy today, of course, because they're dealing with this awful shooting. We're also asking the top levels of Lansing government, including the mayor, to look into this for us because we want that answer. If he was firing out last summer, what happened there? What was done? The other thing I want to relate to you, Kimberly, is that people in this neighborhood, they know Mike McRae, the father. They love that guy. They feel ba very badly for him right now. They say he is just an open, loving guy, very good neighbor here to them. Back to you. Yeah, sounds like he tried to help, too. Yeah. Sean, we appreciate your report tonight. Sean mentioned the gun, the weapon. What do we know about McRae's weapon so far? Right. And first of all, if he's shooting, why right. isn't anything is going on in exactly. the neighborhood? Exactly. Seriously. So you've got a local agency wondering why they they didn't deal with that right. Mm -hmm. And then we're digging into information on the weapon because MSU police confirmed they did recover the weapon, but they did not provide more details about the firearm. Now, remember a while ago we said he was facing a felony firearms charge. Right, it right. got pled down, but how in the world are you able to get that gun? Attorney General Dana Nessel, she's asking some tough questions. Uh, she wants to know how this happened, so we will have her on at six, and we're going to dig deeper into how this gun issue developed yeah. and how do you get a gun and sure, so shoot in your neighborhood. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So many questions remain. We appreciate it. Yeah.